It is time to start our first stop and jot. Don't forget to grab your module two handout. Let's start our review with ideas from the lesson on the brain and reading and a discussion about the science of reading or in its abbreviated form, SOR. We learned that the science of reading is a vast interdisciplinary body of scientifically based research about the cognitive processes and skills involved in learning to read. It is important to remember that SOR is not a curriculum or philosophy, nor does it equate to phonics or to any other area of literacy development. It is a body of evidence that helps inform educators about how children learn to read, thereby serving as a strong foundation to ensure that more students receive evidence-based instruction in literacy. Another important fact we learned is that learning to read is not hardwired in our brains. It must be taught, and neuroscience has provided a window into the inner workings of our brains so we better understand what happens when we read. Brain imaging allows researchers to identify regions in the brain activated during reading and track neural pathways responsible for reading. This information has verified what we already knew. Learning to read is a very complex task, but we now know why. It requires activation of all four lobes of the left hemisphere, as well as connections across these lobes. Knowing the functions of the brain provides us with valuable insights about how children learn to read and informs the science of teaching reading, STR, which is classroom instruction aligned to the science of reading. Earlier, we read a quote by Fisher and Frey, every brain needs to be taught to read. Now let's continue our recap by reviewing what is meant by scientific models and how they can help inform us about ways to do just that. A scientific model is a physical, mathematical, and or conceptual representation of what is known about a system of ideas or processes. So far, we have covered three models of reading, each designed to help us better understand how reading develops and how we become skilled readers. The first model we explored was the four-part processing model. This model helps us better understand how the brain recognizes words. Each of the four processors activates as the reader moves from smaller units of language to larger components of language. The orthographic processor receives input from written language. The phonological processor attaches sounds. The meaning processor then processes the information as it relates to word meaning. And then the context processor helps determine what it means within the context of the reading. The next model helps explain how reading comprehension requires more than just word recognition. The simple view of reading is a model that uses a mathematical formula to illustrate the role of word recognition and listening comprehension in reading comprehension. Basically, the model helps illustrate the fact that skilled readers have to possess some degree of proficiency in both word recognition and listening comprehension in order to achieve any degree of reading comprehension. Scarborough's Reading Rope is a visual model designed to explain and reveal two overall big ideas. First, it expands on the two main domains of the simple view of reading by revealing the different skills involved in word recognition and language comprehension. The word recognition domain includes three subsets of skills, phonological awareness, decoding, and sight words, while five subsets of skills make up the language comprehension domain, background knowledge, vocabulary, language structure, verbal reasoning, and literacy knowledge. The rope metaphor also illustrates that no one skill is more important than the others, but they all have to come together to create skilled readers. That wraps up our review of the six key concepts we have covered so far in our study. The science of reading, the reading brain, the science of teaching reading, the four-part processing model, simple view of reading, and Scarborough's reading rope. Before moving on, be sure to take a moment to think about these big ideas and how they might relate to your classroom instruction.